will be discussing today citric acid cycle also known as Krebs cycle. It is a common pathway for carbohydrates, lipids and proteins and it occurs in mitochondria and it is strictly aerobic. In glycolysis there was an alternate pathway for regeneration of NAD but in Krebs cycle there is no alternate pathway therefore it cannot be anaerobic. Now as we already discussed in glycolysis that the end product of aerobic glycolysis is pyruvate and then this pyruvate enters the mitochondria because glycolysis occurs in cytoplasm but Krebs cycle occurs in mitochondria and in mitochondria an enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase complex acts on it giving one CoA to it and removing carbon dioxide as from every glucose we get two pyruvate so the carbon dioxide released will be also two in number and after this decarboxylation reaction two carbon compound that is acetyl CoA will be formed and this acetyl it is used as there is two carbons so we call it acetyl and as this enzyme is a dehydrogenase it means NAD will be converted to NADH and after this acetyl CoA enters the Krebs cycle and the reaction between glycolysis and Krebs cycle is called link reaction because it connects two cycles that is glycolysis and Krebs cycle. Now in Krebs cycle the first enzyme to act is citrate synthase. It acts on acetyl CoA and combine this acetyl CoA with oxaloacetate and it form citric acid. After that the next enzyme is aconitase. It acts on citric acid to form isocitric acid. It is an isomer form of citric acid. Then this isocitric acid is converted to alpha ketoglutarate with the help of isocitrate dehydrogenase as there was 6 carbons in isocitric acid but only 5 carbons in alpha ketoglutarate. It means there is a loss of 1 carbon in the form of carbon dioxide and as this is a dehydrogenase that means NAD will be converted to NADH and as there is a loss of one carbon its hydrogens are given to this NADH now the next step is also decarboxylation step which is catalyzed by alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase forming a succinyl CoA and this enzyme is adding a CoA to it and also as this is a dehydrogenase it means NAD will be converted to NADH by this enzyme now next step succinyl CoA is converted to succinate it means there is a loss of CoA then what was the use of adding CoA it was added so that when it is removed it can give some extra energy some extra energy to form GTP from GDP and ADP don't allow GTP to keep the high energy phosphate group and gets converted to GTP with the help of succinyl CoA synthetase. Next step is conversion of succinate to fumarate with the help of succinyl dehydrogenase. But this dehydrogenase it converts FAD to FADH2. Easy to remember because the product is fumarate and formed one is FADH2 F and F easy to remember. Now next step is catalyzed by fumarase adding water to fumarate forming malate and finally malate is converted to oxaloacetate with the help of malate dehydrogenase again dehydrogenase it means NAD will be converted to NADH and again this oxaloacetate it will be combining with acetyl CoA to form citric acid and this way the cycle continues and called the citric acid cycle and this NADH this one this one and this FADH2 they will enter the electron transport chain for generating energy that is oxidative phosphorylation whereas this ATP it is directly formed it means it is substrate level phosphorylation and one more thing to notice is 
this carbon and this carbon both the carbons of acetyl coa are removed now about the enzyme regulation so the first enzyme is citrate synthase it is inhibited by its product that is citric acid and also the purpose of this whole cycle is to generate energy that is atp so if there is already enough amount of energy we don't need more therefore atp will also inhibit citrate synthase and also nadh will inhibit it because anyhow nadh is going to electron transport chain to generate atp and also succinyl coa will inhibit it this succinyl coa will inhibit it like giving a red flag saying i'm already too much don't make more but what can activate it if the high level of atp was inhibiting the process it indirectly means the low level of adp will activate the process now what the next enzyme that is aconitase so in red poison there is a chemical called fluoroacetate and because of that instead of acetyl coa oxaloacetate will combine with fluoroacetyl coa forming fluorocitric acid and this fluorocitric acid will inhibit the enzyme aconitase it kind of seems like a suicide therefore it is an example of suicidal inhibition now the next enzyme that is isocitrate dehydrogenase it is inhibited by atp and therefore activated by adp but now we know why we need citric acid cycle to generate energy therefore the muscle send a signal via calcium to activate citric acid cycle to generate more and more energy now moving towards the next enzyme that is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase it is inhibited by its products that is succinyl coa and nadh its products that is succinyl coa and nadh and activated by calcium the same way as isocitrate dehydrogenase there is one more thing about alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase that is it is an integral part of histone demethylase as we know that our dna is wrapped around histone protein and is methylated and it is methylated and so the function of histone demethylase is to remove this methyl from histone proteins but if there is a mutant form of this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase enzyme then it won't allow alpha ketoglutarate to bind with this histone demethylase and therefore the gene expressions will be affected and also in krab cycle it won't form succinyl coa now instead of succinyl coa 2 hydroxy glutarate will be formed which leads to cancer of glial cells that is glioma next enzyme is succinyl dehydrogenase and it is also present in electron transport chain in the form of complex 2 and defect in it can lead to pheochromocytoma also called pcc it is a hormone secreting tumor that can occur in adrenal glands next enzyme is fumarate and its defects can lead to another cancer that is lioma that is in smooth muscles so we are done with the enzymes now let's see what we got from this citric acid cycle or krab cycle the first thing we got is carbon dioxide two carbon dioxides the first one and the second one but we know that we have two cycles for each glucose as two pyruvate enters the cycle therefore in total we'll get four carbon dioxides and the second thing second thing we got is atp so now let's calculate the atps we got this is 2 nadh because everything will be two in number now so this is 2 nadh plus this 2 nadh plus this 2 nadh they all will enter the electron transport chain and for every nadh we'll get 
2.5 ATP. Therefore, in total, 15 ATP will be generated. And this FADH2, for every FADH2, will get 2 ATP after getting to electron transport chain. So, for 2 FADH2, we'll get 4 ATP. And 2 ATP directly from this substrate level phosphorylation. So, here we are done with the citric acid cycle. I hope you liked the video. Please comment below your experience of learning. Do like and hit the subscribe button for more.